A lot of people feel tall and tails are the same thing, or that one is a better version of the other. But the truth is, if you're using the wrong one for a situation, you could be exposing yourself without even realizing it. So in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what tall does and what tail does, and when you absolutely should or shouldn't use them. Um, that said, let's get straight to it. First, let's clear something up. Privacy and anonymity are not the same thing. Privacy is about keeping your data to yourself. You know, your browsing history, your location, your conversations. Anonymity is about hiding your identity. So who you are, where you're coming from, what devices you're using. Of course, the two often overlap. So a tool that helps you stay anonymous usually protects your privacy also. But it always doesn't go the other way around. So the tool you need usually depends on your threat model, who or what you are trying to stay private from. That said, let's talk about Tor. Tor stands for the Onion Router. It's a privacy network that encrypts and routes your internet traffic through at least three layers. A guard node, a middle relay, and an exit node before it reaches the internet. Now, the cool part is that each layer only knows about the one before and after it. This simply means that your ISP can see you might be using Tor, but not what you're actually doing. The exit node sees your traffic, but doesn't know who you are, unless the site isn't using HTTPS. Tor will encrypt your traffic within the network, but not necessarily end-to-end -to, -end to the website. This means that if you visit a site that doesn't use HTTPS, someone running the exit node or someone watching it could read or manipulate your data. And this is why we say Tor is only really private when combined with encrypted websites and good browsing habits. Also, Tor will only protect your traffic within the Tor browser. If you open Spotify or Chrome in the background, that traffic goes through your normal internet connection, not through Tor. You are not protected. And don't think that Tor will protect you from malware or operating system leaks either. If your system is compromised or even just misconfigured, your anonymity can vanish in seconds. Keep that in mind and then let's discuss tales. Tail stands for the Amnestic Incognito Live System. It's a complete operating system based on Linux that runs on a USB stick. You plug it in, boot from it, and everything runs in memory. When you shut it down, it leaves no trace on the computer you used. No saved files, no history, nothing written to the disk. And it routes all your internal traffic through the Tor network, no exceptions. If a site tries to connect without Tor, it gets blocked. So in short, Tor is the network, Tails is the environment. Tails is designed for people in high-risk situations. So journalists working with sensitive sources, whistleblowers exposing corruption, activists in authoritarian regimes, people crossing borders where devices may be searched, or anyone who is about to use a potentially compromised computer safely. That said, let's be clear on something. Tails does not protect you from everything. If a computer's firmware like the BIOS is compromised, or if there is a hardware key logger attached, Tails can't save you. It also can't help you if you log into your personal Facebook or Google accounts or upload something with your real name. Now, remember I said Tails is a full operating system. It's the entire environment. So the question is, what's inside of Tails? Well, it comes preloaded with tools designed for privacy and anonymity. Tools like Tor Browser, everything goes through Tor. Onion's share for anonymous file sharing. Mat2 to scrub metadata from images and documents. Veracrypt to encrypt all your files and KeyPassXC, a secure offline password manager. Now, if you need to learn more about password managers, you should check out my tier list where I educate and talk about the best ones for you. Also, on Tails, you can set up something called persistent storage. It's an encrypted area of the USB that keeps files and settings between reboots. But you should be careful about this because if someone physically seizes that USB, they can try to brute force your persistent storage. It's secure but not unbreakable, especially against a nation-state actor. So, treat that USB like your wallet. Do not lose it. 
Now, it's apparent that both tools, Tor and Tails, are extremely potent. But let me take a second to talk about what Tor can do and what it can't. Tor is excellent for bypassing censorship, hiding IP addresses from websites, and preventing tracking scripts and surveillance. But then it's not foolproof. It's slow, and this is by design. You don't expect Netflix or fast downloads. It's also vulnerable to timing attacks by advanced adversaries. It will not protect you once your browser is fingerprinted. And yes, just using Tor will draw attention in some countries. Some regimes flag Tor traffic and might watch anyone who uses it. So even if they can't see what you're doing, they know you're trying to hide something and that can make you a target. Now let's talk about what Tails can and cannot do. This one is the ultimate solution if you don't trust the system you are using. If you're at an internet cafe, a library, or even a friend's house, and you need to access or send something without leaving a trace, Tails is what you want. It forces all apps through Tor. It blocks everything else. It resets every time you reboot. It can even spoof your MAC address to make your computer harder to track on networks. But none of this means you are invisible. If someone installs a hardware keylogger, Tails won't notice it. If your behavior gives you away by logging into personal accounts, anonymity is gone. And if the computer's firmware is infected, even Tails can't protect you. So when I say Tails leaves no trace, what I actually mean to say is on a local system. You can still leave traces in the physical world, in network logs, or even through behavioral patterns. So at this point, I guess the big question is, which one should you use? Well, let's look at a few scenarios. If you need to block trackers and hide from advertisers, use the Tor browser. Tails is an overkill. If you need to bypass censorship or hide your IP from a specific site, Tor browser is probably enough as long as you trust your own system. If you need to use a shared or public computer, then Tor browser isn't safe. That system might be logging your keystrokes or recording your screen. Use Tails. And lastly, if you're handling sensitive documents or sources, use Tails with persistent storage if needed. But don't lose that USB. And here are my final thoughts. Tor and Tails aren't magic. They both are powerful tools, but only if you understand what they do and what they don't. Tor hides what you're doing. Tails hides that you were ever there in the first place. But neither can protect you from your own mistakes or from powerful adversaries watching everything. So if you're serious about privacy, don't just install a tool and assume you're safe. Know your threat model, use the right tool for the job, and always stay cautious. And if this helped clear some things up for you, please remember to subscribe and like this video. I make videos that cut through the tech confusion and give you straight answers that actually help. With the next one, stay safe out there.